Hey guys, so I wanted to hop on here before we get started with math and talk about just a couple of quick reminders. Um, quick reminder that in the um, on your homepage, you'll see where I'm posting these video links, um, any sort of other fun little activities throughout the day just to get you started, morning message and things like that. Um, reminder that in the activities tab, again, these are all optional, but I do have a nonfiction text feature quiz if you want to do that for your activity today. It looks like I accidentally posted it twice. Um, and then we've got our um, nonfiction scavenger hunt. And then today we're going to be talking about um, 3D shapes, which Lou is very intrigued by. Um, I wanted to remind you about our resource tab on that I just referenced in our ELA video. Um, we have now talked about polygons, um, shapes to attributes, plane shapes have quadrilaterals, and now we're moving into this 3D and um, attributes of our solid shapes. So you'll notice that there are two Nearpods. Those are going to be great resources to go on. There's also um, a Brain Pop Junior video that's an excellent resource for solid shapes, as well as some worksheets. So I know that this is just a basic one on um, looking to identify the difference of 3D and solid shapes, um, as well as uh, I just closed it, but there's some um, another website there that's got some, some sheets on there that I will link. Um, I'll also be linking um, just an activity on solid and plain shapes today. Another thing that you guys are familiar with in class is our quizzes. Um, we haven't done a whole lot lately, but if you're in my morning group, you know that we do these a lot to uh, just practice different skills. So these are going to start being shared weekly on that extra resource tab as well. So you'll see that there are two quizzes codes here. You just go to joinmyquiz.com and then you'll type in that. Oh, I'm sorry. That did not work. Oh, it added a dot in between um, for the space. So here you would just go to joinmyquiz.com. When you click straight from that link, it seems to be posting. Um, it looks like it, it adds, adds a dot where there's a space. I can see now that there actually is a dot on here, so I'll make sure to edit that document later, for especially for next week going forward. But you can just copy that Nearpod code, or I'm sorry, um, quizzes code, and you can enter in that code there. It's going to ask you to put your name in, and then it's going to have a start quiz. Um, this one is set to automatically begin. You don't have to wait for the teacher or anything like that. Maybe we can host a live one, though, where everybody logs in at the same time. And here it's just going to be a basic way for you to review your different shapes um in a different way that is definitely you guys <laughs> when you want to do a quiz um so you've got a lot of different um features here to help you review those different shapes the last thing i wanted to talk about before we get started with our um actual lesson on the different um, shapes and attributes and things like that. Again, use those resources. Go watch that Brain Pop video. Um, look at all the different, I'll post, uh, I'll put a poster, a, an anchor chart on there for you so you have it to reference um, different, different attributes of solid shapes. But um, I did want to remind you that I ready um, and this particular student is not going to have um, a math one. So I'm going to show you under the um, reading one. They're in a different math class, but you would do the same for math. But when you go here, notice that there is now a teacher assigned lesson. So this is going to be where your grade comes from. Start it will lesson. have a due date there. And then you'll just click that and, and go through. You'll have these and then it'll go back to what you were working on on your path. So I'll send out an email to the parents to make sure that they're aware of this. There's going to be reading, one in reading math. and in math. For my two friends that are in Miss Davis and Miss Hall's math class, um, they will be assigning you an activity there as well. So if yours isn't there today, it will be there soon. All right, so for today's activity, we're advancing to solid shapes. These are our three-dimensional shapes. We're going to spend talking about um, how these are different from our plane shapes and what some of their attributes are. We're going to spend time today searching our home or outside for solid shapes in our real world. So if you go over to activity B, it's a shape hunt. So it's really fun. This is something we would totally do in school. We'd walk around the school and see what we can find, um, 3D shapes. It says a suggested activity is take pictures using an iPad and create a pic collage. That would be a great thing. I'd love to see if you guys are able to do that. Or I believe Seesaw's added that feature where we can add multiple pictures pictures to our documents now. Um, so that would also be really fun there. <laughs> Lou is 
very interested in the shapes today. Um, but there is also a great recording page here for you. It does say classroom, just cross that out and you can put room or you could put on, on your walk. Um, it looks like it's a little bit cloudy now, um, but hopefully the, the weather will pick back up and we can um, go on a nature walk today and, and see what shapes we can see in our real world. Okay, so just so you guys can see this little puppy, how he is stretched over the chair and on his couch all the way across because he wants to say hello. So hi, Lou. Hi. Okay, sorry about that. Hopefully Lou will cooperate, although he doesn't seem to want to. I think he wants to hang out with you guys and play with shapes too. <laughs> Um, so this is a great sheet for you to uh, record all of the things you find. I can try to link this into Seesaw as well if you want to just do it digitally or if you want to. I saw already um, Chloe yesterday had it printed out and she was filling it in as she could find things in her room. So it was a really good um, activity to find some different things. Okay. So we've got all of these plain shapes that we've been looking at this week. We've got, you know, hexagons and we've got um, trapezoids, rhombus, another hexagon, <laughs> triangles. They're flat shapes. We talked about the sides. We talked about the vertices or the corners or the points, maybe you've heard them reference as, and then the angle, which is the inside category here. So it's going to be actually a part on the inside that we can measure. And for those of you that got started with the, um, it was a 2D and 3D shape activity on Seesaw that I posted yesterday, um, it talked about right or um, square corners. So obviously a square is going to have square corners. And what they are, are they, they are these perfect L angles. So they're going to be these perfectly square angles that I could actually draw a small square in the corner using those, those um, square angles. If I look at this shape, look at that angle in there, is that going to allow me to make a nice, neat, perfect square? It's not. So that does not have a square angle. Looking at my triangle, no square angles on this shape. But if I, again, I look at my square, I can see that it does have square angles. It actually has four. And unfortunately, I don't have any other shapes with me here that would allow me to show you. Um, here's a rectangle that we'll be using later. But this also has square corners. So I could actually draw a square in the corner. But using a shape like a rhombus, looking at that shape, I can't draw a square because of this angle. It's tilted outwards. It's actually what we call an obtuse angle. It's too wide. Um, those are some different angles we would talk about if we were in class and we had more time, but I'm trying to keep it short. So um, if you want to learn more about angles, maybe that's something you can send me a message about and I can find some resources for you. Um, but noticing our plane shapes, they're, they're um, two-dimensional, they're flat. If we look at the difference between our square and our cube, our cube is three-dimensional. I can see that there are so many more parts of it. It is made up of squares, but it is, it is three-dimensional. I can hold it in my hand, I can flip it, I can slide it, I can push it around, whereas this is a flat shape. So looking here, we can see the parts of a solid or a 3D shape. It still has that vertex, it still has that point. Um, on the edge um, where the the two sides meet and then we have instead of calling these sides now we have what are called edges and you can think about that as if we're the two flat faces which we're about to talk about this is the flat side of our shape um, it they're where they're going to meet is going to make almost a straight line that's going to be our edge so in this particular cube if we were to count the edges we would need to count every single line and it can get tricky because you can lose your place. So if you have a way to keep track, what I like to do is I like to hold my finger on one of the edges or one of the points and count. Okay, I'm counting the top ones for first. There's a square, so there's going to be one, two, three, four edges, which then means on the bottom, I know there's going to be one, two, three, four edges also. And then I need to count one, two, three, Four. So I have three sets of four, which is going to make 12. So there are actually 12 edges on my cube. If I'm looking back at the vertices or the vertex, that's the point. So I've got one point, two, three, 
four for my square, and then I need to count the bottom ones. Five, six, seven, eight. Our faces are our flat sides. Um, the curved surfaces are not actually going to be um, a face. So um, it's going to be a flat surface. What they mean when they say or a curved surface, they're talking about if it's a curved um, rounded edge here, but this part right here is not a flat face. Anything that's going to be a face, what I always reference is can you put it flat on your face? That's going to be your face. So that one has <clears throat> multiple faces. This one I can put on my face, but if I put this one here, it would roll if I was laying down. Um, this cone, for example, has one flat face. This part all the way around would not. It would just roll off my face if I were to put it there. So I can hold this flat against my face. A cube is going to be the perfect example for us to figure out how many faces there are because a cube is shaped like a dice, and a dice has six numbers on it. Our traditional dice at least. So when we roll those dice, we know we can get numbers one, two, three, four, five, or six. So on this cube, um, I know that there are six faces. When you're counting, again, it's hard if you're holding it and you're twisting it. So try to keep your finger on a spot, or if you can mark it, or if you have an, an image of one, try to think of what place you started. So if I'm looking at this one, I could think I could draw a dot here to remember, okay, that's where I started when I'm counting. So I keep my cube and I count the top one and the bottom two, and then the front three, four, five, and six. So there's my six faces. So I'm gonna share with you um, this anchor chart here, which um, shows us all of the faces, the edges, the vertices, and if it rolls. So that's a category, that's a way we can classify these um, 3D shapes, is do they roll, do they slide, can we stack them? So that's something we would play with and we would explore as we would actually stack them on top. Can we stack them? Can we roll them? This one wouldn't really roll, would it? If I have this object here, which is a sphere, I can definitely roll that. I can definitely roll this cone around because it's got that curved edge going all the way around. Um, so I'll post this anchor chart for you here, and it's going to have all of the different shapes that we would talk about. Um, one thing I do want to mention real quick is there's going to be a difference between a prism and a pyramid. And so those are the two that we have a lot of the most trouble with. Um, and it looks like I only grabbed a pyramid and then a prism in a different shape. So I'll show you that in just a second. But a pyramid, we're familiar with this shape because we know that there are pyramids, the Great Pyramids of Giza. Um, we're used to seeing the shape. We know it's a pyramid. Um, it's going to have these triangular faces going up. So you can see all the sides are triangular except for what's on the bottom. So this one has a square, so it's just like this one here, which is a square pyramid. So it's going to have a square-based bottom. Um, unfortunately, I don't have any with me here, but we actually could have a pentagon pyramid. So think about that. What shape would be on the bottom would be a pentagon, so how many triangles would I need? I would need one for each side of my pentagon, so I would actually need five of them. The difference between a pyramid and a prism, so this is actually a one, two, three, four, five, six sided, um, or not six sided shape here, this, this base that we call the bottom of it is six sided, so it's a hexagon, and this is a hexa hexagonal um, prism. And the difference here being that I can see it's got rectangles along the sides instead of this shape, which has triangles along the sides. So again, the bases are different and they can um, form different types of um, prisms. So for example, this one here would be a good one because it has the same base, it is a square. But when I look at it standing up, this one has rectangles going up and down. So this is actually a rectangular prism. This is a square-based pyramid. So that's one thing that we always have a lot of trouble with um, when we're doing these, these studies with shapes, and we it's just more practice. The more practice you can, I know you guys don't have these shapes with you at home to play around with, and I hate that because I wish that we, we did so that we could explore with them the way that we do. Geometry is such a hands-on unit normally in class, so we would be rolling them, we'd be stacking them, we'd be sliding them, we'd be doing all these fun things, and I promise you if we get back to school, I'll make sure that we still get some time to do that. Um, but in the meantime, I'll search for some math tools today to see if we can get um, access to that and I'll post these online for you. Um, happy shape hunting!